Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone, high rollers time, and this week we're going to check out the latest Robert Edwards auctions, which ended on December 3rd. A lot of vintage in this auction, a lot of baseball in this auction, so if you are into vintage baseball, then you will be quite pleased. We're going to count down the top 10 after running through some honorable mentions, and we will start with pre-war baseball. 1888 and 172 old Judge Cap Anson is a portrait graded in SGC Good Plus 2.5, uh, eleven thousand four hundred dollars. Cap Anson sporting a an impressive mustache there. They don't make mustaches like they used to. The card looks beautiful for a 2.5. It's a 140ish years old or so. Anson is a Hall of Famer as is Mike Kelly. 1888 and 28 Allen and Ginter. Mike King Kelly graded a scorching PSA near mint seven. Another example of one of those. Impressive old style mustaches, fifteen thousand six hundred dollars. What a beauty there! How cool would it be if you could just say, you know, somebody asks what's your name, and you say, my name is King. Nineteen thirty three Gaudi Napoleon Lajway, grid an SGC near mint seven. This is a, a super short print, really tough card from this set, uh, just short of six figures, ninety nine thousand dollars from the same set. Mel Ott, nineteen thirty three Gaudi PSA mint nine. Wow, uh, Mel Ott looks pretty angry in that uh, in that image there, but. $51,600, maybe he was expecting it to go higher. 1933 DeLong Gum Lou Gehrig, beautiful card here. SGC EX5, beautiful set in general. Uh, $18,000 for the mid-grade Lou Gehrig. Uh, 1953 Tops, basically a common Don Hoke, graded a PSA Mint 9. You can thank the PSA Pop Report and the set registry for this one, going for $13,800 for, uh, again, essentially a common. 1953 Bowman Color Whitey Ford, graded PSA near Mint Mint 8. This is a high number series card, uh, already a tough card, but obviously even tougher in high grade, $10,800. Oddball card from 1954. 1954 Stallmeyer Franks Willie Mays, a uh, very rare card to begin with, but this one's a PSA Mint 9, which is a Pop 1, none higher. It's the highest known copy on planet Earth, $93,000. Frank Robinson, rookie, 1957 tops, also graded a PSA Mint 9. And again, like the uh, Stallmare Maze, there are no copies of the card in a 10. So this is the best you can do. $27,600 for the Frank Robinson rookie. More Hall of Fame rookies in PSA Mint 9 grade. Tom Seaver, 1967 uh, PSA Mint 9, $15,600. Another card from the tough high number series uh, of that year. Another Hall of Fame rookie pitcher from the 1960s, Nolan Ryan, 1968 tops. Venezuelan. The Venezuelas were made in Venezuela, as you may have guessed, and are extremely rare. Sort of just a different paper stock than the standard cards, but otherwise look identical. PSA Fair 1.5. Uh, it's really tough to do much better than that, as these are almost always in low grade. Tw uh, $13,200. More Nolan Ryan 1971 OP Chi. Uh, Nolan Ryan graded PSA Gem Mint 10. That's a pop two. The 71 tops and OPGs, obviously with the black borders, uh, make it extremely tough to get in highest highest of all grades with chipping along the borders and edges being quite common. $43,200. Jumping ahead to the 1990s, uh, Frank Thomas, rookie, 1990 tops. This is the rare no name on front error variation. Graded a PSA near mint mint 8, $16,200 for the big hurt. Another Nolan Ryan, 1993 tops, finest refractors. Uh, Nolan Ryan PSA Gem Mint 10. This is the very first year of refractors in any set, 1993 finest. Nolan Ryan and King Griffey Jr. are generally the top two cards in the set, $34,800. I'm going to guess that that's the record sale for any 93 uh, finest refractor, although I don't know that uh, for sure. Switching over to football, Walter Payton, 1976 tops. Walter Payton rookie PSA Gem Mint 10, $48,000 for the only rookie card of sweetness. Bronco Nagurski, 1935 National Chicle, uh, card number 34, graded PSA Fair, 1.5, although it looks to be a very, very strong eye appeal-wise, 1.5, 19800 bucks. On to basketball, 1961 Fleer, Wilt Chamberlain rookie, graded a beautiful PSA near Mint Mint 8, uh, what a stunner there, $37,200, a little bit off-center, top to bottom, but that is the only thing my eye uh, can see from here as an issue. Uh, unopened wax from basketball, 1971 tops basketball unopened dual wax box of 24 packs. It is sealed and certified by Baseball Card Exchange. You're gonna need to fork over 72 grand if you wanna open up one of these. Switching over to non-sports, it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's a 1940 R 145 gum ink card number one Superman graded a PSA VG3. Looks like a really strong eye appeal VG3 from here, just short of ten thousand nine thousand six hundred dollars. 
More uh, non-sports, 1951 Bowman Jets, Rockets, and Spaceman. Complete set of 108 cards. This is the, uh, every single card is as graded by PSA, and this is the number two ranked set on the PSA set registry with an overall grade average of $8.37, $16,800. And we'll finish on two game-used jerseys to uh, wrap up the honorable mentions. First is this 2013 New England Patriots Game used road uh, game used road jersey uh, worn by Tom Brady. It was photo matched uh, to four different games that Brady uh, wore this jersey in on the road in 2013. Two hundred and sixty four thousand dollars over a quarter million dollars. And a similar item for from Kareem Abdul Jabbar from 1971 to 1973. Milwaukee Bucks game used home jersey of Kareem Abdul Jabbar photo matched as well. I uh, don't know the details of that, but it goes for ninety six thousand dollars. But that brings us to our top 10, and leading us off at number 10 is a 1959 Topps Baseball Complete Master Set. Uh, the set contains 572 cards. This set contains 581, as it includes nine variations as well. Every single card is graded by PSA, uh, with an overall average just above an 8. And uh, this is the number 10 ranked set on the PSA set registry for 1959 Topps. You can see all the big boys there. Mantle, Clemente, Aaron, Mays, uh, Koufax, Musial, etc. appear to be... For the most part, all PSA near mint mint eights. This sold for one hundred and two thousand dollars. I forgot to mention at the beginning that all the prices you see include the buyer's premium. So the hammer price was a little bit less than this, but this is what the buyer is paying out of pocket to own this uh, absolutely beautiful and impressive uh, 1959 Topps baseball complete master set. Number nine, 1954 Topps. Number ninety-four, Ernie Banks rookie. Graded a ridiculous SGC Mint 9. Look at this absolute beauty. I don't see anything to complain about. Uh, sometimes centering can be tough to determine on the 54 tops, but even that looks great. Uh, just everything about the card looks basically perfect. Back does have some really, really minor chipping along the uh, couple of the borders, but as you can see, it got the superior label from PWCC, meaning at some point this card sold through or was listed on uh, PWCC, and they considered it the top 5% I appeal for the grade, but... Obviously, this card here sold on Robert Edward Auctions for $102,000. And this is actually the new all-time record sale of this card in any SGC holder, surpassing another SGC 9 that went for $81,000 back in May of this year. Uh, for anyone wondering, PSA 9s go for about $150K, so about 50% higher than this one. Uh, it's an SGC Pop 2, and there are no copies graded higher by SGC. Number 8, 1909 E90-1 American Caramel Joe Jackson. Shoeless Joe here is graded a, uh, an SGC VG3. It's an older SGC label when they still use the 1 to 100 scale when a 40 equated to present day uh, VG3. Rounded corners, really the uh, the only main issue on the front of the card. Uh, otherwise, looks really nice centered and all. Uh, back does have some staining as well. 3 seems, yeah, uh, like a fair grade. Sold for $108,000. This is actually the new all-time record sale of this card in this grade by uh, more than, well, exactly doubling the last sale of $54,000, which was in January of 2022. Uh, more recently, a PSA 2 sold for $69,000. So that was just a, earlier this month, actually. So compared to that, this price seems uh, quite, quite high. The card is an SGC Pop 15 with 12 copies graded higher by SGC. I actually would have thought this card was rare but it's been graded uh, 83 times in total by SGC alone. Number seven, never heard of this card before or seen one before, and Shoeless Joe going back to back here. 1917 Felix Mendelssohn uh, Joe Jackson graded a PSA authentic altered, and it looks like it's been trimmed or, or cut funny. or uh, you know It's an oversized card, so I don't know what this is supposed to look like, but uh, the back has some notable damage as well. And it's sold for $117,000. And listen to how rare this card is. This is the only copy ever graded by PSA in uh, PSA's history. I could only find one other sale of a copy of this card in any grade. That was all the way back in 2013, 10 years ago, when an SGC 1.5 sold for $38,000. So that is the, uh, this is the, the first sale in over 10 years of a copy of this card. Number six, sticking with our ultra-rare pre-war theme, 1921 Frederick Photo, Babe Ruth. It's graded an SGC Good 2, and uh, the card looks, I don't, well, I mean, I don't know what the card's supposed to look like. It looks kind of faded and sort of weird rounded corners. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that or not. I've, again, never heard of or seen this card before. Back looks like a back, and it's clean, uh, I guess, as you can see there. 
sold for $168,000 and another just ridiculously rare card. Uh, there was a re there was a recent sale of this card in a PSA 3.5. By recent, I mean six months ago. The PSA 3.5 sold for $234,000. And uh, that's the all-time record sale of a copy of this card in any grade. This copy here at 168 is the second highest ever sale of the card. And uh, there's only six known examples to exist by uh, graded by, by one of the major grading companies. Number five, not a lot of modern this week, but here's one 1997 Metal Universe Championship Precious Metal Gems, number 23, Michael Jordan, graded a BGS near mint mint plus 8.5 with uh, above average level subgrades. You get an 8, 8.5, a 9, and a 9.5 on there. The Precious Metal Gems out of this set were serial numbered out of just 50. This sold for $240,000. It's the second highest sale of a copy of this card ever. About a year ago, a BGS 9, so a half grade higher, sold for 288000 and that is the all-time record sale. This one here um, landing at number two. Number four, 1955 Bowman, number 202, Mickey Mantle, graded a PSA Mint 9. It might be a slightly generous 9, as the top and bottom border, as you look at the card here, have uh, slight chipping along the entire border, although that's quite common on the 55 Bowmans because of the uh, wood grain border, but still a very, obviously, very, very sharp card centered well, and the uh, surface looks basically perfect, back looks clean as well. Sold for $246,000. This is the third highest sale of a copy of this card ever. A uh, The all-time record sale is back in 2021 when a PSA 9 went for $375,000. Uh, amazingly, there's been one PSA 10 sale that was all the way back in 2005, uh, and that went for just 14 grand. Uh, still waiting on that time machine. The card is a PSA Pop 9, and there are three copies graded higher. Number three, Shoeless Joe went back to back earlier. Now Mickey Mantle going back to back. 1952 tops, number 311, Mickey Mantle graded a PSA near mint 7, and it comes with the NBA silver sticker which I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it, it means, you know, strong eye appeal for the grade. I can see the cards off-centered left to right, but that's really the only notable issue I see. Surface looks great. Everything looks very, very sharp, in, uh, including on the back. Sold for $246,000. This sale is actually very low. Uh, it's the lowest PSA 7 sale of, a, of about the last 10 or so, dating back to May of 2021. And uh, the average of recent sales of PSA 7s is 324,000. So down about 20 to 25% off of uh, off the average. Number two, 1933 Gowdy, number 149, Babe Ruth. Graded a PSA near Mint Mint 8 and looks to be an absolute razor blazer from here. It gets the NBA uh, Gold Diamond sticker, which again means, uh, you know, strong eye appeal for the grade, I guess better than the silver. In addition, uh, on the back, it also has a PWCC uh, above average eye appeal label, meaning top 30% eye appeal for the grade. So at some point, this was listed on PWCC, and it was at some point sent to MBA. Uh, so yeah, third party, or I guess fourth party grading, becoming more and more of a, of a thing, at least at the high end here. Sold for $396,000. Uh, the sales kind of low if you look at recent sales, but it's kind of in line with the way the market's been going. Uh, it's the lowest of the last five sales, but... Sort of uh, on, a, on a normal trajectory, I would say, along with the rest of the market. The last sale before this one went for 462000 That was about a year ago. So down, you know, 15, uh, I don't know, 15, 20% from a year ago. And again, that sort of lines up with what we're, what we're used to seeing in the market today. It is a PSA Pop 20, and there are only two copies graded higher, in, incredibly. Uh, and both of those are 8.5. So there are no PSA 9s and no PSA 10s in existence. And number one, we had three back-to-backs this week. Shoeless Joe, Mickey Mantle, and now Babe Ruth. And uh, I did an entire video on this card alone last week, so I'm not going to talk much about it here. But number one, 1914 Baltimore News, Babe Ruth. It sold for $7.2 million. That is the third highest sports card sale in world history. Again, if you want more info on that, you can check out the video I made on this card uh, a week ago. But that's it. Your top 10 this week featured three Babe Ruth, two Mickey Mantle, two Shoeless Joe Jackson, and one each of Ernie Banks, Michael Jordan, and a 1959 Topps baseball complete set. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll uh, see you again next time. Thanks, everyone.